Welcome back to Case of the Sunday Scaries. I'm Elise, and I am interrupting this episode just to give you guys a little heads up, some housekeeping, if you will. I am so grateful to Annie for helping me out this week and taking over um, what would have just been a Sunday without an episode, because as you all know, it's my turn. And I was so excited to bring you guys a new case to kick off spooky season in a fun way. But unfortunately, I was in Florida this week. And if you haven't been watching the news, we were hit um, where I was at in Fort Myers. We were hit with a category for Hurricane, Hurricane Ian. And um, it's just been a week. It has been a week. But I, again, am so thankful to Annie. Um, But just being down there, it was pretty overwhelming to see how much this is going to impact people's lives and livelihood for a very long time. So of course, in the show notes, we will be putting in some links if you want to help the cause. But otherwise, I am headed back home soon. Very, very grateful to have been in the situation I was in where I could evacuate to a house where I was safe. But what a week. But with that said, again, huge thanks to Annie for letting me use a pre-recorded podcast for this episode. And I will be coming back to you later this week with the beginning of spooky season and a really great episode. So again, I have the best co-host in the world. So with that said, we'll start the episode. Welcome back to Case of Sunday Scaries. I'm Elise. And I'm Annie. And today we're bringing you a little, well, I should, I need to rephrase. Annie is bringing you a little <laughs> mini so something bonus to get you through your week. But Annie, how the heck have you been, my dear? Been good. Just living life. We have a really fun October coming up, which I know Elise will hint at afterwards, but we're full steam ahead of the podcast. How have you been? I have been really good. We're getting little little pup update. She has her first oncology appointment in a couple of weeks. So my bank account's not looking forward to that, but I am. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's going to be pretty wild, but you know, anything for that little girl because she's my, she's my little baby. But things have been going really well. I recently got some hormone injections, which I'm sure I'll be talking about not on this podcast because <laughs> it's not the time or the place. I, I'm hoping that I am back soon to feeling like myself because your girl's hormones were dipping after 30. Real low. Real, real low. I'm glad we have some resolution for that then. Cause... Yeah. So if I start sounding real, real chipper, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> or real, real sad. Does it affect no, it that it way? Be, okay. It should be the opposite. Um, anxiety, you know, those type of feelings should be out the window. So I should be a happy person in a couple of weeks again, which will be lovely. I love that for you. But let's talk about this mini-sode. Yeah, today I'm talking a little bit about murder, a little about unfortunate bad luck, and a whole lot about a body of water, or lack thereof, located in the southwest region of the U.S. Any guesses? <gasps> It's Lake Mead, right? Absolutely. Okay. But it was the, actually the receding water that gave it away more than the murder. <laughs> yes. We are covering Lake Mead and all the weird stuff that's been popping up um, due to this horrible drought that's causing unprecedented water level. After the past few years, I never wanted to hear the word unprecedented, but this episode definitely calls for it. We'll, we'll give you one little pass for today, Annie, but... I agree with you. Unprecedented should be stricken from everyone's vocabulary. (laughs) Absolutely. This lake is the largest reservoir in the U.S. in terms of water capacity and is located on the Arizona-Nevada border, only 25 miles east of Sin City, a.k.a. Las Vegas. The reservoir was created by (laughs) damming the Colorado River up, which actually created the lake. And it was named Lake Mead after Elwood Mead, who was the Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner at the time. What the heck does that mean? (laughs) Yes. So the Bureau of Reclamation is responsible for delivering reliable water and hydropower for the western U.S. Got it. So he's the water guy. He's water boy. He's the water boy. (laughs) He got a lake named after him, which is pretty freaking awesome. That is pretty cool. This body of water is massive. The Lake Mead Recreational Area encompasses the lake, but also Lake Mojave, 
Las Vegas Bay, and the surrounding land. In total, the entire area covers 1.5 million acres, which is twice the size of Rhode Island, and it has about 550 miles of shoreline. That is what? I had no idea it was that big. I didn't either. It was huge. I mean, it is huge. And this is man-made. It was just... Yep. Wow. Created by damming up a river. Oh, I'm picturing people out there shoveling until they hit water. <laughs> I did too. I, I did too. I was looking up like, what kind of backhoes dug like feed? And it's like, no, no, no. It was just, they dammed up a river and it created it. Recently, this reservoir has fallen victim to the worst drought in modern history of the West and Southwest. Levels have become so depleted that Las Vegas began pumping water from deeper than they ever had to because Lake Mead provides water and power to around 20 million people. Some of the states that depend on Lake Mead include Arizona, California, Nevada, as well as some of Mexico. Wait a minute. I lived in Arizona, and you're going to be talking about murder, you said. So did I, was I like shampooing my hair with dead body water? Possibly. I'm sure they have a really good cleansing system, but yes. Excuse me. Annie will be finishing this episode alone. I am going to go shampoo my hair again. <laughs> <laughs> the lake's levels have dropped to their lowest in nearly 100 years as climate change worsens, not only threatening resources, but also revealing some secrets, which I will get into. What's wild is the five bodies that have been found since May that I'm covering today have all been found on the lake's western corner. So May we have of five, this year? Yeah. Five bodies, four months, and basically one western pocket of the lake. I got to go shower immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, like, what's the ratio of things in this lake compared to area? Because this is just one-fourth of the lake's western corner and five bodies have been found. So the first set of human remains were found in a corroded 50-gallon metal drum on May 1st by some people on a boat, and this set is definitely the most ominous. Investigators call this body the Hemingway Harbor Doe. This set of remains had a gunshot wound to the head, execution style, and the body had been crammed into the drum. Historically speaking, can you guess what group of people yes. typically dispose of bodies? What do you think? This is a mob hit. Yep. And we're outside of Vegas. Mm-hmm. This was the mob's method for disposing of people who did them wrong. Authorities determined that these remains belonged to someone who died in the mid-1970s to early 80s, and they based this time frame off of his clothing and footwear. The corpse had a shirt, belt, and shoes clinging to his remains, and what's wild is the remains were well-preserved by cool temperatures and fresh water, and the clothing was so well preserved that investigators were able to still read the labels. That is incredible. After it's almost potentially like fossilized. 30 to 40 years. Yeah. The timeline of this killing coincides with the most violent period in Las Vegas' past, an era of dangerous street crime and underworld killings. The question everyone wants to know is who was this Hemingway Doe? I don't know if you remember whenever this body was found, but it was all over the news. Like, you had to have been living under a rock to not have heard about this body being discovered in Lake Mead. I might have been under a rock. Wow. We're in the process of moving here. I heard a little bit about it, but I didn't research into it much. That's okay that you didn't, because after this information was released, someone did learn about this, and it comes into play. So a woman named Barbara Brock came forward. And she is adamant that these remains belong to her brother, Bobby Shaw. Oh, that's, that's terrible. It is. Bobby has been missing since 1977. And from the remains, police agree it kind of matches a description of him based upon height, shoe size, that kind of thing. What also backs up Barbara's theory is that Bobby was part of the mafia at the time of his disappearance. The mafia was very present in casinos and on the Las Vegas Strip because they would use casinos and resorts for money laundering. I couldn't help myself, and like any good armchair detective, I did some digging into Bobby's life and this mob theory, and it gets pretty wild. Bobby Shaw was 38 years old when he disappeared in the spring of 1977. Investigators in Las Vegas are pretty positive that he was a member of the mob boss Tony, the ant, Spil Spillow Tro's Sin City crew that ran amok on the strip in the 1970s and 1980s. A little bit about Tony and the specific division of the mob. In 1971, Tony, the mob leader, moved to Las Vegas to manage the affairs of the Chicago outfit there. 
The Chicago Outfits, also known as the Chicago Mafia. So this was kind of just a different branch. It's a division of the Italian-American organized crime family that was originally based in Chicago. Ooh, yeah, these are not people you want to be sitting next to at the blackjack table. No, not ones that you want to do wrong either. When Tony moved to Sin City, he formed a group called the Hole in the Wall Gang. And this group was made <laughs> up... <laughs> I know. Okay, I laughed too. Never heard the hole in the wall gang because you don't sound very scary. No, in fact, my mom used to make me watch these very Christian quote unquote gang movies, but it was called the <laughs> Buttercream Gang, and they like went around doing good deeds quietly. No way. And a hole in the wall sounds very, very similar. <laughs> like, right. could you imagine you're just like this big tough guy, and you're like, "Who do you run with, dude?" I don't know how they get. <laughs> He's like, yo, I'm with Hole in the Wall. But like, the Buttercream Mafia. That's hysterical. But was- unlike the Buttercream Mafia, the Hole in the Wall gang was made up of experienced thieves and killers. The crew became known in the media as the Hole in the Wall gang because they would gain entry to homes and buildings by drilling through the exterior walls and ceilings of the locations they burglarized. So they were coming in hot. Okay, that makes me feel... I don't know why that makes me feel a little better, to be honest, because that's terrible. But at least he didn't come up with this name himself. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't self-appointed hole-in-the-wall gang. Yeah. <laughs> On July 4th, 1981, the hole-in-the-wall gang robbed Bertha's gifts and home furnishings in Las Vegas. The robbery was a bust as much of the gang was arrested, including a few serious mobsters who were high up in the crime family. And they were all charged with burglary, conspiracy to commit burglary, attempted grand larceny, and possession of burglary tools. Tony and his brother Michael disappeared on June 14, 1986, so five years later, and on June 22, their bodies were found, one on top of the other, and stripped down to their undershorts, buried in a cornfield in Indiana. In Indiana? Close to Chicago, but far away from Las Vegas. A farmer actually found the bodies based upon this freshly turned earth, and at first he thought they were remains of deer. Which was... That's grotesque. It yeah. is gross. So I wanted to give some background into the mob around this time. Because if you look up anything with Lake Mead, you're going to hear about these old dumping grounds from the mafia. So that's kind of the context. Hole in the wall gang, Tony the Ant, and Bobby Shaw, who was not high up in the mob. Like, if you look up his name, you're not going to find any association. But his sister definitely confirmed he was a part of the mob. Is the mob and the mafia the same thing, Annie? Yeah, I think so. They, they like, intertwine the words. Google it quick. Yeah. Mafia members often become known to law enforcement, while mob members tend to remain underground. Okay. So he was definitely in the mafia then because he was well known. Tony was. Bobby, maybe he was in the mob because he yeah. wasn't well known. <laughs> Got it. Sources place Bobby in the crew due to his past with robbery and drug rackets. Like I said, there's not any mention of Bobby, but his sister puts him there. At the time the remains were found, Barbara was contacted by the police and asked to provide DNA samples for her missing brother. Barbara's nephew was also asked to provide samples. The samples are now being used for an investigation into the victim's identity. The coroner said it will take at least a year to identify these remains, but I would be sweating if I was a former member of the mafia or the mob and used Lake Mead as dumping ground because these bodies are popping up. That is so wild. I still can't get over that just in one small area, there's been five bodies found in, because, yeah. in months. Yeah, since May, so four months. A week after the Hemingway Harbor Doe was found, a second set of remains were discovered at Calville Bay. These skeletal remains were discovered by two sisters who were exploring Lake Mead by way of paddleboarding. They had planned to scuba dive, but due to low lake levels, had to resort to paddleboarding. The girls had stopped to explore a nearby sandbar that had always been underwater, and they started to kind of dig around, and they pulled up a bone. They <laughs> thought it was... <laughs> Sally, I got a seashell. What happened to that nice game? Right. They thought it was the skeletal remains of a bighorn sheep. But as they kept digging, they discovered more more and more bones, eventually digging up a jawbone. And that's when it kind of clicked like, oh, this is this is human. That is my worst nightmare. These two sisters named Lynette and Lindsay are residents of Vegas and have been coming to Lake Mead their whole life. They did an interview and they are some detectives. They talked about how the jawbone had a tooth with a crown and one with a filling. And that was when they officially confirmed it wasn't a sheep. So, like, imagine looking at, looking at this jawbone and being like, 
oh, they had some cavities at one point. And then probably just like dropping in, freaking out. Yeah, the little doll sheep is not walking around with, you know, a dentist receipt for a new crown and a gold filling. <laughs> exactly. They notified park rangers who boated out to them. And the park rangers initially thought it was also bighorn sheep up until the jawbones. It turns out bighorn sheep are so, so common around Lake Mead. And I guess they die a lot. Yeah, but humans don't have horns. I feel like if your name is bighorn sheep, that might be a... No, sorry to p- put a nice pun in here, but a dead giveaway. Yeah. I wonder if they find a lot of bones that are bighorn sheep. And I'm, I mean, the chances of you going paddleboarding and stumbling upon a human body. Yes, the Hemingway Harbor Doe had just been found a week earlier. But I feel like at the time, maybe they thought that was just a weird accident. And then to find another body that close in proximity a week later probably just seemed like way too much. This body was identified on August 25th, and even though it isn't crime-related, the story deserves to be told. It involves the Ernst family, and this incident happened back on August 2nd, 2002. It was a gorgeous summer day, and the Ernst family took their boat out on Lake Mead. The family resided in Las Vegas, and they loved taking their friends and family on the boat. The father, named Thomas, was an airplane mechanic and an extraordinary single dad whose kids were at the center of his whole world. His sister said he loved his kids dearly and was always lending a helping hand to others. Just a solid, solid guy. On this particular August night, the sun was setting, the stars were coming out, and the family was still out on the water. Thomas's daughter, Tina, was 14 years old, and she remembers how big the waves were that night. She also remembers her dad jumping off the boat like he always did, and then his hand kind of brushing the ladder of the boat, and her dad saying, help three different times. Oh, I wish you guys could like see my arms are covered in Mine are too. Bumps. Mine are too. I am so obsessed with my dad that I, oh, this is going to make me emotional. I mm-hmm. can't imagine watching this. No. The family looked frantically, but due to the darkness and the big waves, they were unable to locate Thomas. Authorities chalked this up to a drowning, but for decades, there was no closure in the case. Up until the water started drying up due to the drought, and the partial human remains were found by the sisters on May 7th in the Calville Bay area. Authorities were able to positively identify this set of remains because of DNA provided by Thomas's daughter and by Thomas's son. This discovery has brought a sense of peace to Lisa, but it's also brought back a lot of nightmares from that night. She talked about how this positive identification made her relive the horror of the night that her dad disappeared, But at the same time, she feels a lot of peace and closure because Lake Mead was his favorite place in the world. Oh, yeah. He died doing what he loved but and with people he loved. But I just can't imagine. Oh, I just can't imagine being there that night and then not having the body for that long to like kind of put in a lot of ways like a funeral provides a lot of closure, a significant ending chapter to someone's life and to not be able to do that. I have. Just hope, like you said, this has brought their family a lot of peace. But, oh, that breaks my heart. Uh Uh-huh. It's super, super sad. On July 25th, another set of remains were found, and these are referred to as the Swim Beach Remains. This area of the lake has a shoreline that is known for swimming, boating, and picnicking. Park rangers responded to a report of human remains found in this area, and they immediately set up a perimeter to recover the remains. They were not thinking this was sheep anymore. Yeah, at this point, they're like, all right, new week, new body. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. It just clicked. You said this is in a swimming area? Mm-hmm. So up until the water receded, you're bringing your friends and family out for a little picnic, a little hot dogs and good times, and you were swimming above dead bodies? Yeah, a moment of silence for that thought because it's eerie. You might and, just ruin lakes for me. <laughs> just and, all lakes. Right. And Lake Mead has all this sand, which you think sand is heavy once it gets wet. Water beats against it. It kind of makes almost like a cement sometimes. So I'm still curious how many more bodies we're going to be finding once all this stuff starts to kind of, once the water continues to go down, which it is, and the sand becomes, you know, more fluffy, like without the water. Fluffy sand. I love that. <laughs> We're dreaming. I'm I'm headed to Florida next week, so I'm dreaming of fluffy oh. sand. But now you, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to go swimming anymore because I'll be just thinking what, normally I'm thinking like what kind of big fish is below me. And now I'm going to be thinking of just, oh, okay. Way, my way head, worse. My head's going. 
The Clark County Office of the Coroner and Medical Examiner is currently assisting with determining the cause of death. They said as of now, there's nothing that indicates foul play. But what complicates this investigation is that these are only partial remains, unlike the other two. I think they're saying there's no sign of foul play because this body wasn't found like in a metal drum like the first one. Just a week later, another set of human remains were found in the same area. And as of now, investigators are still working to determine if these remains are related. Remember, this was found like a month ago, so it's still a pretty new case. After these remains were found, a local fisherman named Freddie Ramos told KSNV of Las Vegas that he was thinking of totally giving up on the lake. He said, I haven't gotten any fish, and everywhere I go, there's bodies. Poor Freddie. Yeah, poor Freddie, and poor just any. Does everyone stay out of the water? Wasn't that yeah. a quote from Jaws? <laughs> just, I think so. Just stay out of the water. Just get yourself a nice hot tub, a nice bath, things where you can see the bottom. That's where we should be. Yep. And this brings us to our fifth set of remains. These were also discovered around Swim Beach. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and this body was discovered on August 15th. What sets this one apart and makes it a little bit more suspicious is that a firearm was also recovered in close proximity to where one of the human remains were found. It's unclear if it was connected, but a journalist who was at Lake Mead looking around for these kind of some, for some stories actually stumbled upon the weapon and then the body. They what found the weapon first and then the body. Ooh. Yep. Is Lake Mead pretty clear? Like, are these people just like stubbing their toe on a on a skull or? From what I've seen, it's not super clear, but the sand looks nice, and they're finding them <laughs> mostly in the sand. <laughs> Annie, it looks. It looks vacationable. Like, like, I wouldn't go there by choice, but if you're in Las Vegas and you want to cool off, I think people do appreciate Lake Mead. Law enforcement say they are expecting to find more bodies as water levels drop. They said most are probably legitimate drowning victims, but that they believe they will find victims of crime due to the close proximity to Las Vegas. Some other weird findings, one that you sent me, Elise, a World War II landing craft, the same type famous for its use on D-Day in 1944, the type of boat called a Higgins boat was recently found. According to the Las Vegas Review Journal, the Higgins boat at Lake Mead was surplus to the war effort and was sold off by the military in the years after World War II. The vessel was used to survey the Colorado River, but it was later sold to a marina at Lake Mead. Eventually, it was deliberately sunk to anchor a breakwater, which basically means they take an offshore structure and they kind of build it to protect the marina from the waves coming in. Oh, I see. And this was buried at a depth of nearly 185 feet, and that's now exposed. We've lost 200 feet of water out of Lake Mead. But way more even. As of last month, the lake was filled to just 28% of capacity, its lowest point since 1967. Other weird findings, um, basically just a lot of other boats and personal watercraft that previously sank. Some are standing directly up and like pointing to the sky. Yeah, what is the reason for that? I think it's how it sinks and then just the repetition of the waves hitting it oh. just like buries it into the sand. And then whenever the water sinks, yeah, they're like pointing straight up. Well, if we think back to our biggest boat sinking reference that we all have, if you're of a certain age, Titanic. You know, remember when it broke in half and then it went kind of just straight down? Yep. It created like a vortex on its way down, with just water pressure and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how ominous that would be, though? You're just like boating along, having a little kayaking moment, just had your tuna fish sandwich or whatever. And then you look down and you just see this old sunken ship. I mean, it'd be really cool, but I imagine it would be very haunting as well. Yeah, and I feel like it'd be dangerous if your boat hit that. Like, if you didn't see it and it was kind of just well, of there course. and your boat runs over it, that's it, though. That's, like, me. So a lot of the bodies have not been identified yet. But as we kind of get updated, um, we'll make sure everyone stays informed. You know, I'm thinking about that first one with the potential mob tie. I wonder why it's going to take a whole year. Is it just because it's such an old case that they're not in any necessarily any rush to figure it out? I think they're actually in a rush, and they talked about how the freshwater had preserved the body and even the clothing tags, but I'm not sure if it complicates the DNA at all. Oh, that would make sense because they're probably like it's underwater a for tissue. decades. Oh, that that makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, wow. So vacation to Lake Mead, anyone? 
<laughs> yeah, me either. Elise, talk about uh, talk about what's coming up in October. <gasps> Guys, it's almost here. Yeah, welcome to Spooky Spooky. It actually, I was just telling Annie, it looks like fall outside today. It is dreary. There's a little bit of misty rain. It makes me want to cuddle and watch a movie. But if you are like us and like a good little spooky season, you can instead of cuddle up and watch a movie, cuddle up and listen to us because we are pushing out content for you guys this month. Um, I'm not going to promise how many episodes, but I will say it will be more than one a week. Oh, yes. And we are gearing up for really amazing things coming down the line. Thank you for all of your support and listening up to this far because we have some really, really cool things that we will be talking about as the month goes on. I'll just say that. And we will be launching. If you don't want to just hear us and want to see us, there might be a way to be doing that very, very soon. Hint, 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 hint. (laughs) Um. But I just am – I'm honored that people have given us the time because it doesn't – like I've said before, it does not pass us by that whether it's a half an hour or an hour, that's a lot of time out of your day that you're just listening to two girls talk about crazy things. So gear up for spooky season. Gear up for tons of listening headed your way. And the announcements will start creeping in throughout the month of October with, uh, like I said, gearing up for a very big announcement at the end of the month. All right, guys. Well, I hope this little mini from Annie has not traumatized you about, you know, actually (laughs) summer's over. Get out of the lake anyway. It's cold. So hopefully you guys are still want to take vacations, but maybe not to Lake Mead or do and then write us in about it on the website. Oh, that's an idea. Because I want to know everything. Can you see to the bottom? Is it creepy crawly? I want to know. But we will be back, as always, on Sunday with an episode from Little Old Moi, and it is going to be the launch of Spooky Season and our October Fest of episodes. And we're going to be discussing why was it that for a long time people, and especially parents, wanted to check the candy before they let their kids dive in. So we will be starting off with a bang. So until then. Bye.